Hello, and welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to, an introduction into Valve's Source Filmmaker. My name is Philip Reeves, and I'm one of the lead instructors here at Digital Media Academy. In this Source Filmmaker how-to, we'll focus on the actor and timeline. Here are the basic system requirements needed to run Source Filmmaker. To download your copy of Source Filmmaker for free, visit www.sourcefilmmaker.com. Now let's get started. All right, so in our last tutorial, we created a scene and learned how to move the camera around. Now that we're comfortable using the camera, let's start building our scene. Okay, we have a set, but we don't have any actors yet. By hitting the F11 key, we enter what's called the game mode of Source Filmmaker. This is where production comes in during the movie making process. And if you've ever played a game on a PC before, you'll quickly become comfortable with moving the actor around. WASD moves him around the map, spacebar gets him to jump, left click swings the bat, and dragging your mouse around faces you in different directions. Now that we know the controls, Let's quickly talk about the scene we'll be creating. The actor we're currently controlling will be performing a taunt on this log here, while another actor will be looking from behind the tires, staring at the guy, planning his next move. The tensions will be created by using different camera angles and cuts. Okay, so let's go ahead and place the actor on the log over here. And once the actor is placed, hit the F11 key to exit game mode. All right, so you should notice right away that we don't see our actor anywhere, and that's because we don't have any recorded data yet. In order to see actors we import from game mode, they first have to be recorded into the scene. So why don't we go ahead and record some data so we can see our actor? Go ahead, click the record button, click OK. You'll hear a series of four beeps, and the fourth beep means action. All right, so I'll hit the G button to perform his taunt. And once it's done recording, hit Escape, and you should now see I'm in the viewer. Remember that in the viewer, we've been moving the work camera around? It's best to imagine the work camera as a director. It's always moving around, letting you see everything that's going on in your scene. The work camera is not meant to be saved to a single location. Instead, you want to create new cameras which represent the cameraman. And these new cameras are meant to be saved to a specific location, not moved around like the work camera. By going to this little arrow here, change scene camera, and right now we already have a camera one. That's because we created a camera by recording the scene. But later, when we want to have multiple camera cuts, just select new camera to create a new one. But for now, select camera one, and let's find our first camera angle. Using the controls learned in the previous tutorial, position the camera below the actor, making him appear larger than life. Let's see. That's a good spot right there. All right, I think it's time to go into the timeline. The timeline is where the recorded data is stored, and it's also where we edit our movies. The line right here is the playhead, and when we click and drag the top part, we can view the recorded data in the viewer. Clicking and dragging the bottom of the playhead will move our timeline around. We can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out of the timeline. And if your shot is all over the place, instead of trying to get it neatly back in the center, just hit the F key and it'll automatically do it for you. This concludes the actor and timeline how-to. In the next how-to, we'll bring in the other actor and edit our movie. And if you're interested in learning more about Source Filmmaker, check out the hands-on course Digital Media Academy is offering in which you'll learn all there is about Source Filmmaker and create your very own short film. To learn more, visit www.digitalmediaacademy.org.